free software, software Libra, or Libra software is computer software that gives users the freedom to run the software for any purpose as well as to study, change, and distribute the software and the adapted versions. The right to study and modify free software gives full access to its source code. For computer programs which are covered by copyright law this is achieved with a software license where the author grants users the aforementioned freedoms. Software which is not covered by copyright law, such as software in the public domain is free if the source code is in the public domain. Other legal and technical aspects such as software patents and digital restrictions management can restrict users in exercising their rights and thus prevent software from being free. Free software may be developed collaboratively by volunteer computer programmers or by corporations, as part of a commercial, for-profit activity or not. Free software is a matter of liberty, not price. Users, individually or collectively, are free to do what they want with it. This includes the freedom to redistribute the software free of charge, or to sell it for profit. Free software thus differs from proprietary software, which prevents users from studying, changing and sharing the software. Free software is also different from freeware, which is simply a category of freedom restricting proprietary software which does not require payment for use. Proprietary software use restrictive software licenses or EULAs and usually do not provide access to the source code. Users are thus prevented from changing the software, and this results in the user relying on corporations to provide updates, help, and support. This situation is called vendor lock-in. Users often can't reverse engineer, modify, or redistribute proprietary software. The term, free software, was coined in 1985 by Richard Stallman when launching the new project, a collaborative effort to create a freedom-respecting operating system, and the Free Software Foundation, or FSF. The FSF's free software definition states that users of free software are free because they do not need to ask for permission to use the software. History From the 1950s up until the early 1970s, it was normal for computer users to have the software freedoms associated with free software. Software was commonly shared by individuals who used computers and by hardware manufacturers who welcomed the fact that people were making software that made their hardware useful. Organizations of users and suppliers, for example, share, were formed to facilitate exchange of software. By the early 1970s, the picture changed. Software costs were dramatically increasing. A growing software industry was competing with the hardware manufacturers' bundled software products. Leased machines required software support while providing no revenue for software. And some customers able to better meet their own needs did not want the costs of free software bundled with hardware product costs. In United States vs. IBM, filed January 17, 1969, the government charged that bundled software was anti-competitive. While some software might always be free, there would henceforth be a growing amount of software produced primarily for sale. In the 1970s and early 1980s, the software industry began using technical measures to prevent computer users from being able to study or adapt the software as they saw fit. In 1980 copyright law was extended to computer programs. In 1983, Richard Stallman, one of the original authors of the popular Emacs program and a longtime member of the hacker community at the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, announced the new project, the purpose of which was to produce a completely non-proprietary Unix-compatible operating system. Saying that he had become frustrated with the shift in climate surrounding the computer world and its users, in his initial declaration of the project and its purpose, 
He specifically cited as a motivation his opposition to being asked to agree to non-disclosure agreements and restrictive licenses which prohibited the free sharing of potentially profitable in-development software, a prohibition directly contrary to the traditional hack ethic. Software development for the new operating system began in January 1984, and the Free Software Foundation was founded in October 1985. He developed a free software definition and the concept of copyleft, designed to ensure software freedom for all. Some non-software industries are beginning to use techniques similar to those used in free software development for their research and development process. Scientists for example, are looking towards more open development processes, and hardware such as microchips are beginning to be developed with specifications released under copyleft licenses. Creative Commons and the free cultural movement have also been largely influenced by the free software movement. 1980s Foundation of the new project in 1983, Richard Stallman, longtime member of the hacker community at the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, announced the new project, saying that he had become frustrated with the effects of the change in culture of the computer industry and its users. Software development for the new operating system began in January 1984, and the Free Software Foundation was founded in October 1985. An article outlining the project and its goals was published in March 1985, titled The New Manifesto. The manifesto included significant explanation of the new philosophy, free software definition and copyleft ideas. 1990s Release of the Linux kernel The Linux kernel, started by Linus Torvalds, was released as freely modifiable source code in 1991. The first license was a proprietary software license. However, with version 0.12 in February 1992, he re-licensed the project under the new general public license. Much like Unix, Torvalds' kernel attracted the attention of volunteer programmers. FreeBSD and NetBSD were released as free software when the USLV BSDI lawsuit was settled out of court in 1993. OpenBSD forked from NetBSD in 1995. Also in 1995, the Apache HTTP server, commonly referred to as Apache, was released under the Apache license 1.0. Naming The FSF recommends using the term free software rather than open source software because, as they state in a paper, on free software philosophy. The latter term and the associated marketing campaign focuses on the technical issues of software development, avoiding the issue of user freedoms. The FSF also notes that open source has exactly one specific meaning in common English, namely that you can look at the source code. Stallman states that while the term free software can lead to two different interpretations, one of them is consistent with FSF definition of free software so there is at least some chance that it could be understood properly. Unlike the term open source, Stallman has also stated that considering the practical advantages of free software is like considering the practical advantages of not being handcuffed in that it is not necessary for an individual to consider practical reasons in order to realize that being handcuffed restricts their freedom. Libra is often used to avoid the ambiguity of the word free in English language. See gratis versus Libra. Definition and the four freedoms. The first formal definition of free software was published by FSF in February 1986. That definition, written by Richard Stallman, is still maintained today and states that software is free software if people who receive a copy of the software have the following four freedoms. The numbering begins with zero, not only as a spoof on the common usage of zero-based numbering in programming languages but also because Freedom Zero was not initially included in the list but later added first in the list as it is was considered very important. Freedom Zero, the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Freedom One, the freedom to study how the program works and change it to make it do what you wish. 
Freedom 2. The freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor. Freedom 3. The freedom to improve the program and release your improvements to the public so that the whole community benefits. Freedoms 1 and 3 require source code to be available because studying and modifying software without its source code can range from highly impractical to nearly impossible. Thus, free software means that computer users have the freedom to cooperate with whom they choose and to control the software they use. To summarize this into a remark distinguishing Libra software from gratis software, the Free Software Foundation says, Free software is a matter of liberty, not price. To understand the concept, you should think of free as in free speech, not as in free beer. See Gratis versus Libra. In the late 1990s, other groups published their own definitions that describe an almost identical set of software. The most notable are Debian Free Software Guidelines published in 1997 and the Open Source Definition published in 1998. The BSD-based operating systems, such as FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD, do not have their own formal definitions of free software. Users of these systems generally find the same set of software to be acceptable, but sometimes see copyleft as restrictive. They generally advocate permissive free software licenses, which allow others to use the software as they wish, without being legally forced to provide the source code. Their view is that this permissive approach is more free. The Kerberos, X11, and Apache software licenses are substantially similar in intent and implementation. Examples The free software directory maintains a large database of free software packages. Some of the best-known examples include the Linux kernel, the BSD and GNU Linux operating systems, the GNU compiler collection and C library, the MySQL relational database, the Apache web server, and the SendMail mail transport agent. Other influential examples include the Emacs text editor, the GIMP raster drawing and image editor, the X window system graphical display system, the LibreOffice office suite, and the Tex and Latex typesetting systems. Licensing. All free software licenses must grant users all the freedoms discussed above. However, unless the application's licenses are compatible, combining programs by mixing source code or directly linking binaries is problematic because of license technicalities. Programs indirectly connected together may avoid this problem. The majority of free software falls under a small set of licenses. The most popular of these licenses are the new general public license, the new lesser general public license, the BSD license, the Mozilla public license, the MIT license, the Apache license, the Eclipse public license. The Free Software Foundation and the Open Source Initiative both publish lists of licenses that they find to comply with their own definitions of free software and open source software respectively. List of FSF-approved software licenses List of OSI-approved software licenses the FSF list is not prescriptive. Free licenses can exist that the FSF has not heard about or considered important enough to write about. So it's possible for a license to be free and not in the FSF list. The OSI list only lists licenses that have been submitted, considered and approved. All open source licenses must meet the open source definition in order to be officially recognized as open source software. Free software on the other hand is a more informal classification that does not rely on official recognition. Nevertheless, software licensed under licenses that do not meet the free software definition cannot rightly be considered free software. Apart from these two organizations, the Debian project is seen by some to provide useful advice on whether particular licenses comply with their Debian free software guidelines. Debian doesn't publish a list of approved licenses, so its judgments have to be tracked by checking what software they have allowed into their software archives. That is summarized at the Debian website.
it is rare that a license announced as being in compliance with the FSF guidelines does not also meet the open source definition. Although the reverse is not necessarily true, there are different categories of free software. Public domain software, the copyright has expired, the work was not copyrighted, or the author has released the software onto the public domain. Since public domain software lacks copyright protection, it may be freely incorporated into any work, whether proprietary or free. The FSF recommends the CC0 public domain dedication for this purpose. Permissive licenses, also called BSD style, because they are applied to much of the software distributed with the BSD operating systems. These licenses are also known as copy-free as they have no restrictions on distribution. The author retains copyright solely to disclaim warranty and require proper attribution of modified works and permits redistribution and any modification, even closed source ones. In this sense, a permissive license provides an incentive to create non-free software by reducing the cost of developing restricted software. Since this is incompatible with the spirit of software freedom, many people consider permissive licenses to be less free than copyleft licenses. Copyleft licenses, with the new general public license being the most prominent, the author retains copyright and permits redistribution under the restriction that all such redistribution is licensed under the same license. Additions and modifications by others must also be licensed under the same copyleft license whenever they are distributed with part of the original licensed product. This is also known as a viral license. Due to the restriction on distribution not everyone considers this type of license to be free. Security and reliability There is debate over the security of free software in comparison to proprietary software, with a major issue being security through obscurity. A popular quantitative test in computer security is to use relative counting of known unpatched security flaws. Generally, users of this method advise avoiding products that lack fixes for known security flaws, at least until her fix is available. Free software advocates strongly believe that this methodology is biased by counting more vulnerabilities for the free software. Since its source code is accessible and its community is more forthcoming about what problems exist, and proprietary software can have undisclosed societal drawbacks, such as disenfranchising less fortunate would-be users of free programs. As users can analyze and trace the source code, many more people with no commercial constraints can inspect the code and find bugs and loopholes than a corporation would find practicable. According to Richard Stallman, use of access to the source code makes deploying free software with undesirable hidden spyware functionality far more difficult than for proprietary software. Some quantitative studies have been done on the subject. Binary Blobs and other proprietary software In 2006, OpenBSD started the first campaign against the use of binary blobs in kernels. Blobs are usually freely distributable device drivers for hardware from vendors that do not reveal driver source code to users or developers. This restricts the user's freedom effectively to modify the software and distribute modified versions. Also, since the blobs are undocumented and may have bugs, they pose a security risk to any operating system whose kernel includes them. The proclaimed aim of the campaign against blobs is to collect hardware documentation that allows developers to write free software drivers for that hardware, ultimately enabling all free operating systems to become or remain blob-free. The issue of binary blobs in the Linux kernel and other device drivers motivated some developers in Ireland to launch Nuisance, a Linux-based distribution with all the binary blobs removed. The project received support from the Free Software Foundation and stimulated the creation, headed by the Free Software Foundation Latin America, of the Linux Libre kernel. As of October 2012, Triskwell is the most popular FSF endorsed new Linux distribution ranked by DistroWatch.